We found here at, at Birmingham that the Gideon Bible is a lifesaver. Because very often, this will be the first contact that the inmates will have with God through reading the Gideon Bible. My dad left home when I was 10 years of age. He was an alcoholic. My mum was involved in a number of different criminal activities. Life early on um, toughened me up. As a result of the lifestyle that I was involved in, the drugs, the drink, at a young age, I ended up doing crime, doing burglaries and things of that nature. I got caught on numerous occasions and for the first time at the age of 15, I was remanded to Swansea uh, Young Offenders Institute. Well, I remember the officer taking me to the cell we walked up a steel stairs and it's very cold inside prison. He opened this big, thick door with a small spy hole about that big on it, really small. He opened up this door with his keys and he just said, in you go, son. And he just, you know, I just went in, just walked in with his bed pack and looked, thinking to myself, this is my new home. And behind me, the door just slammed into the frame. And I thought, wow, th this is it. This is my life. Here I am in a cell eight foot by six. And I remember sitting on the edge of the bed, put my, my head in my hands, and you sit there for quite a while trying to re-examine and look back over your past and think, what have I done? I think being in prison, you, you, you miss the things that seem unimportant when you don't have freedom. The joy of actually walking from your house to the shop to buy a can of Coke or a pack of cigarettes as it was then, you know, just those little freedoms that we, we take for granted. When prisoners come to the prison, uh, they are faced with the certain reality that they are at a loss. You know, they, they, they're facing long years sometime in, in custody. They come into the prison with all sorts of problems. They probably are drug addicts, as many are. They have never been to school. They can't read and write. I work on a, a life of wing here. Uh, they're predominantly doing over four years, two life. Uh, last year, the Gideons came here and they issued Bibles out. I was actually on a Sunday service when they were issuing them out. And also you walk around the cells and you'll find that a lot of the cells have got the Gideon's Bibles in there. One afternoon I came back to the cell and uh, there was a Gideon's Bible in my cell, which uh, hadn't been there before. And I remember sitting down in the cell and I saw it and just thought nothing of it. You know, oh, they've just placed their religious people. One afternoon I opened it up. I began to read. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. And I. I've never read a Bible before in my life. I'd never been to a church. I'd never experienced that kind of thing. So to me, this was like, wow, what am I reading here? And I was, I was gripped by what I read in that book. And I began to read. I read from chapter one. I read right through the Gospel of John up to about chapter 20. And the more I read, I felt really good about these words, as if the words were going into me and feeding something in me. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't really know about being a Christian or, you know, being a disciple or a born again person, all these phrases people use today. I didn't know none of that. All I knew was, as I read the Bible, it was changing me. And that Bible in my prison cell was the start of a journey that revolutionized my life. I do see people picking up New Testaments and Bibles. Uh, you see them reading them in the cell as you're doing roll checks and things. Not only that, in the morning when you go around the cells, when they're out to work or they're out doing other things, you'll also see their Bibles opened and you'll see they're reading a the chapter. When prisoners are under punishment, uh, which they sometimes are, the Bible, the Gideon Bible, is the only book they have access to. Having actually picked up a, a, a New Testament, a passage uh, that talk actually about them, who they are, and finding hope in, in, in the verses of scripture, that draw them then to find out more about who is this God, when I read the Bible, it began to speak to me personally about my life and about where I was spiritually. I wondered if this man called Jesus could raise my level of life too, like he's done for these people in the Bible. And so that began on a journey of discovery. I went to the chapel, I went to the, uh, the Sunday services in the prison and began to talk to the chaplain there and people would come in and testify and talk about their own journey. I was um, bailed to this hostel. I went into a meeting. The first night I went there, there was all these men there with their hands in the air and they were singing and, and I'm, I sort of stood there, out of respect, I just closed my eyes and think about Jesus and for that moment I had a real spiritual encounter that changed my life. And in that meeting that night I had a revelation, I saw Jesus on the cross and he said, Richard I did this for you. At that moment I fell to my knees and I remember tears were just pouring from my face and I just cried out and I said, Lord I give you my life and at that very instant I knew 
Somehow I just knew through that spiritual experience that all of my sins, all of the wrong that I ever did, God had forgiven me for. And that was the greatest feeling I'd ever experienced. No one had ever told me they loved me, let alone show me that they loved me. But Jesus Christ did that night and it changed my life. After that experience of knowing Christ, I no longer took heroin, speed, cannabis, drugs were gone. I had no cold turkey and I read the Bible from cover to cover three times in one year. I've seen life being transformed by inmates just reading the scriptures and from reading, making inquiries about what they've read. And I've seen that the access scriptures bring changes in the lives of the inmates. Just by reading the scriptures, they, they have comfort. And from having comfort, they have assurance. You do notice changes in people as they come to know the Christian faith. I had um, a lifer who changed. He moved on to another prison with a good, strong faith. He actually got baptized at this prison. If it had not been for the fact that a Bible had been placed in my cell by the Gideons, then I don't know where I'd be today. The fact is that that Bible in my cell placed there gave me hope. It gave me a sense of purpose and direction in my life. But more than that, it gave me the greatest message of all. It told me about a man called Jesus Christ. In our prison system today in the United Kingdom, we have over 75,000 prisoners. They need the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to be able to place a Bible in every cell across our land and to be able to give a New Testament to each of the prisoners in our system so that they can read something of God's love and find him as their own personal saviour. For 10 years, we prayed persistently for access to the local Young Offenders Institute. God answered our prayer and we have seen over 40 young offenders come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But we need you to support us. We need you to pray for us and we need you to help us provide Bibles like this to go into every prison cell in our land and to see that every prisoner gets a New Testament. We want to reach them for the Lord Jesus with the good news of his love.